Assalamu alaikum. My name is Fadba Wazwaz, and I am going to be doing a podcast today on the lovers of justice are many. How can we grapple with the injustice in the world? Growing up, you know, and I'm sure all of you have experienced this, you know, you got excited, um, you did your first presentation, and we all, of course, gra- um, reached for the Quran, and we reach for the verse in chapter 4, 135. O you who believe, be upholders of justice, witnesses for Allah, even though against the interests of yourselves, or the parents, and the kinsmen. One may be rich or poor, Allah is better caretaker of both, so do not follow desires, lest you should swerve, if you twist or avoid the evidence, then Allah is aware of what you do. And after you did your first presentation, you're excited about this verse, and you did it in many interfaith discussions, and many intrafaith discussions, and even, you know, nothing to deal with faith, but discussions with groups of people on various issues that you're invited as a panelist, or at time just a member of the audience. Um, we had a discussion at one point, even about limiting liberty, and there were some other discussions about racism and xenophobia. And so we always loved this uh, verse. And then over the years, as you ever experienced where you went out and you uh, either filled out a form to the police department and you said, you know, this police officer has violated their... Uh, interaction with you in a sense that they were exceeding um, their, you might say, their behavior uh, or their conduct in, in enforcing the law, uh, the, the, the results came that they investigated and they found that he was innocent. So he said, okay, and there was nothing really you could do. When you went to institutes and you complained, that this person, the teacher that is teaching, uh, acted in a way that was disrespectful. They were very mean and rude. Um, They came and rushed to their, their defense. When you went to another institute and you said, uh, this female speaker um, was mocking you and targeting you on uh, social media, and also plagiarizing your writings and your your thoughts. Uh, The institute came, um, as well as the teachers came passionately and and blindly to her defense. Uh, Another case, you start to journey through life and you find uh, you're dealing with issues of the Palestinian community and Israel, and you find that Israel investigated it itself, and it found itself, remember, investigated itself, and it found itself that um, they are innocent. Um, their soldiers are innocent. In fact, when the investigation goes from Israel investigating itself to their being brought before the ICC, and the International Criminal Court, then they go ballistic. If you tell others, similarly, I'd like your friend to come before an independent investigator, then they get upset also. So it's this mentality of, if you will, we love justice, um, but... um, we like to get up and give presentations and videos and clips and all these discussions. But when it comes to practicing justice and when it comes to being called as witnesses, when it, when it comes and someone says, your friend, will you benefit from, there's an interest there. Remember, like uh, your, your parents necessarily, you may speak up against them and you think that, I speak against my parents, I speak against my kinsmen, I speak against my ethnic group. Yeah, but um, are, are, are they benefiting you? 
Do they serve your interests? Um, do they call you out for your behavior? Because the verse begins with, um, even though against the interest of yourself. And you find that same person, when you look at who this person benefits from, and you find the groups and the like group and the, uh, if you will, the friends that benefit this individual socially, benefit this individual financially, benefit uh, this individual in various ways. Um, and you tell them, well, this person, you know, did X, Y, Z, they compassionately defend that person and blindly defend that person. Um, furthermore, if, if you look at, uh, there was a case that happened um, where Brett Kavanaugh was accused of sexual assault uh, years ago, and none of us were there. We were not there, just like uh, God told um, Prophet Muhammad, you were not there when he tells him the story of Joseph. So we were not there when this situation took place. I personally do not like Brett Kavanaugh. I support Christine Ford. But if we are for justice, we have to remind ourselves we were not there. Um, it may be that we have to come to a point of where we say that we don't have sufficient evidence, um, but you saw people like throwing arrows at him, even though I don't like him. And they were like passionately fighting and that everyone convinced themselves that they want justice. And they're doing this for justice. Okay, that's fine. And then what happens? Then you tell them, well, your friend here, here, this friend of yours, he violated boundaries. Your friend here, I have sufficient evidence in writing that he violated boundaries and you benefit from this friend. You benefit socially and you benefit it financially and there is a benefit there. Let me see you call him out the way you called out Brett Kavanaugh because you have, you have a connection here and I have sufficient evidence that your friend violated boundaries and they passionately defend their friend they counter and they twist and they and they and they distort and they passionately defend their friend um you go to another uh, sheikh in town you say this friend of yours um has violated boundaries he passionately defends his friend um and then they want to speak for justice and they want you to serve their cause now why am i mentioning all of this because i want to share briefly a story with you in another discussion that i was invited to it was a play i was invited to a play and in this play that i was invited to um I was asked to give to listen to the play, watch it, and then give my commentary. Um, it was at the Guthrie Theater, and the play was by it was Aaron Davidman, with direction by Michael John Garcia. It was set in America about Israel and Palestine, and it's called, like I said, Wrestling Jerusalem. It follows one man's journey to understand the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, David's performance was a personal story, his own personal story. And that's why I kept saying, I love listening to people's stories. And this is my interpretation of his personal story. Um, he grapples with complexities of identity, history, and social justice. He was giving voice to 17 different characters. The play sheds light on one of the most entrenched conflicts of our time. Um, so this is how the play began, and I, I and I discussed the play. Um, it was written. I'm sorry, <clears throat> I don't know when it was written, but I'll let me just continue by discussing the play. And it says, I in fact did a blog and a video on it on obligation and hope and so wrestling jerusalem the play begins with the story of a rabbi 
He goes to a bar and he's having a discussion with the person in the bar. He tells him his journey, this rabbi, that he prayed for 40 years for peace at the Western Wall. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so the person, at the, the bartender, tells him, so what happened? And he said, well, I've been speaking to a wall. Uh, and so the play had, like I said, 17 stories of various people, Palestinians and Israelis, uh, the personal experience of the author and playwright. And so I mentioned in my feedback that at times we pray for peace and our soul reminds us what we need to hear. You know, we, we pray for something and someone, God sends somebody and uh, we hear that voice, but then our ego counters. And that's how the play came across to me. It began with praying for peace, voices of pain and suffering. Uh, and then rationalization, justification. Then uh, uh, pray, uh, the occupation, uh, the impact of the occupation, voices of rationalization and justification. Then um, <laughs> reminders to love thy neighbor. Then voices of rationalization and justification for colonialism. Then, then you know, Nakbe, then voices of rationalization and justification for that. You know, it went like that. It, kind, it came across to me like the soul is trying to expand and, and, and find space to receive God's mercy and say, look at the pain, look at the suffering, uh, look at, and then the, the, it counters with the ego, which tries to constrict and rationalize and justify and prevent the heart from receiving the mercy that it needs to receive. So it reminded me also of, and I mentioned that to them, the prayer of Moses upon in peace, when God told him to go speak to Pharaoh, that Moses responded with a prayer for God to expand his breast. Why? Because Moses was not um going there to rationalize and justify anything he was not going there to speak to pharaoh with his ego he was going there to speak to moses waiting for god like i gave that example um listening to god and expecting god to inspire his heart what he can deliver from so the soul receives and then deliver it to the pharaoh in order to be able to receive from God this type of inspiration, this insight, this wisdom, you need your, your chest to be, to be expanded. You need to, to have enough space because light, that light that's going to come in, uh, it's not going to be just sound bites and, you know, weaving, cut, paste, weave, cut, paste, weave, and then just, you know, throw it out there. Uh, it's going to take over and it's going to be dealing and countering a social ill in society the prayer that prayer that moses upon him peace prayed showed his humility uh, and he also showed that he was listening to his soul remember i said listening to god also uh, that he's reaching out with his soul listening to god so that god can guide him on what to say to the pharaoh uh, not listening to his ego and uh, letting his ego to have a discussion or a one-on-one, -on -one, um, you're unjust, uh, Pharaoh. You're bad. You're, you know, yeah. I'm here. The, the, you know, stand going to stand against you. He was going to be guided by God on how to put that spiritual light before the Pharaoh. And so it came to me across as give me insight and give me understanding. Because only God knows the internal reality of others. And Moses asked God to help him with the right words and insight when speaking. So as I mentioned in that particular in the Guthrie Theater, the plague came across to me as we want peace. We pray for peace, but we counter it and we resist it and then blame it on God. And so I, I kind of just took some time to give you the context of 
one particular uh, discussion that I've been, but there have been many discussions, and I have just given you briefly like a little glimpse here and there, but it, it boils down to, in summary, what I have experienced in this particular play. Whereas that people, we all love justice. We love that verse in the Quran that I mentioned. We convince ourselves that because we love justice, we are just. Um, but in reality, we're all grappling with injustice around the world. And it isn't because there is this one person or one group or Assad or Sisi. It's because we all overlook our little injustices. And when we're asked uh, to come forth and to speak up against your friend who you benefit from, don't just choose any friend. Make sure you choose someone that that person has a benefit from. Uh, don't just say, well, I choose their family. Uh, do they benefit from their family? Uh, is there a personal angst? Because it, it could be a family like Joseph and his brothers or uh, Joseph and, and uh, yeah, Joseph and his brothers or the brothers and, and Jacob. So you want to make sure that the relationship, first of all, between those that are they are called to speak up against or wit bear witness against, it's a relationship where there is love and mutual benefit. I mean, they stand to lose from speaking up against that person. And what I have found is that the majority of us, the majority, and I, I you know, I think. We need to humble ourselves and stop promoting ourselves as a Malcolm X and Ibn Atta'Allah and Khalid Ibn al-Walid and Umar Ibn al-Khattab because some of us really kind of sound like we are on a delusional high, if you will, ego-centered um, reality and we don't realize how we come across when we speak about these things. They sound great and they sound good, but uh, over the years, people have become disillusioned, not because one sheikh did one small thing. People don't get disillusioned because of one person. Uh, they, and it's not really even depression or delusionment, disillusionment. It's more of a problem that needs to be called out, and I think we're not willing to acknowledge it and call it out. It is that we love justice for ourselves. We love justice in a selfish, um, tribal way. We love justice uh, in a way that uh, serves our nepotism. Uh, we love justice in a way that's egotistical. If uh, your sister is unjust and you benefit from her, your sister, um, and someone reached out and said, your sister did X, Y, Z, and she's uh, engaging in behavior that is abusive. Will you take a stand? But you, and if uh, you're going to be calling out Sissy or calling out Assad, but you're the advisor of Obama and he's throwing jo uh, drones against Muslims, um, how... Honest is your reflection pieces or your calls of justice. If you defend your friends or you defend uh, your sheikha, even though she has slandered and tried to spread false information, you never, you never came forth to investigate it. You never came forth to verify it. Yet you're here telling me we need to have um, justice and safe spaces in the masjid. Well, people didn't leave at times because of the sheikh was being um, out of bounds. They left because the sheikh uh, was out of bounds. They left because some women's groups uh, were acting like a cult. And they don't want to hear that. So I leave you with that thought to reflect on. We love justice in a very egotistical, selfish way. The mic is in your hands.